We all love those cool production sounds, that ear candy we love hearing in mixes, and we end up asking ourselves, how did they make that sound? In this clip, George will show you how he took an ordinary fire extinguisher sound and turned it into an iconic production sound in Lowe's New Faces in the Dark. Enjoy. Right, so the fire extinguisher on this one, I kind of went a bit mad on it. So the, the issue with a piece of percussion like this is because it's very hard attack and then not around for very long you need to decide whether actually you're just going to sack it off altogether or you're going to make something out of it i chose in this case to make something out of it so i'm going to take the time to show you what i did uh which is running delay pedals into delay pedals it then hits the saturation stage it then hits okay yeah a color stage that's not a delay Although the repeater is a delay pedal, I used it for color, a room, and then an EQ. Okay, I guess that makes sense, I guess. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like solo. Let's just check. It's not going to be... That's, is that going to be too loud? Let's just play safe. <laughs> play it safe. Just creating some delay patterns. We're now going to distort the living snot out of those delay patterns um, to try and get it to pulse. You'll see what I mean. Repeater was doing because I think that should be curling stuff off. As I was talking about before, when you saturate the living snot out of something, um, you generate loads and loads of low end. We don't need that. We don't need this to be providing the low end, so it is gone. And then we've got another curve in the low mids to get rid of some resonance. So we'll just see how that sits with everything else. Super subtle, but when you know it's there, it's kind of like hard not to hear. Um, right, let's see, what have we got? Oh, I did miss a big clap, uh, called Big Clap. Let's just grab that and see what he is. Is that actually stereo or not? Stereo-ish, okay. Look after AR's ears, drop the volume. So if I'm right in thinking, there is a downbeat there, and yeah, so this is just going to be accentuating the second part of the riff. Right, so we've got a shaker, a tambourine, and we've got a pretty linear channel strip for everything. Um, this will just be because when I was mixing, I'll have come up with a, I guess, an effect that I want, um, and I wanted it to be consistent across all the additional percussion. Let's bring these guys uh, closer to each other so that we can see them all in one go. Um, so I guess the best spot to do is the claps are the most fun. So we've got claps that I added, 
and then there's the claps that the guy sent over. This channel strip makes the most sense on the ones that I built in. So we've got an instance of Devil Lock doing what Devil Lock does, which is destroy everything. Uh, as a result of that, we're going to have to bring the level down. Uh, I'm not doing this on the fader because 11 dB is quite a lot of movement, and I'd rather be doing all the refinement stuff with uh, within the fader itself, on the fader itself. Uh, some EQ, and then I feel like... Is that doing anything? Oh, we've got a mono maker. So we're just filtering all the low end to be mono uh, after all the effects and stuff. So let's have a listen to what that sounds like in solo. And let's just make sure it's not mega loud. So that's all it's doing is just taking all those extreme peaks and bringing them down in, into line. And that's what I've done with these drier claps as well. So those drier claps provide some sort of percussive intent. I have no idea what that is. Uh, so this is an adventure for everyone. We'll find out. All right, um, is that okay? So that's like a distorted piano. That makes sense. Okay, cool. And then a shaker. Let's just build this whole section. So we seeing as the processing is the same, I'll just rinse, rinse it. Yeah, run through this. I kind of want this element to be wider, uh, so I'm going to do one of two things. I'm going to bring in repeater, and I don't know if you, uh, you guys do this or not, but this spread function, this already in this tape delay mode colors the sound. In a really cool way. But then it's switching this to A is what does the cool thing. So let's see if that's the solution that I want. even noticeable I, I'm on I this would be the point where if I wasn't sure what I wanted to do at this point in time this would be the point where I would be talking with the band and I'd be going what do you want this to do do you want this down the middle do you want this out the sides do you want it bright do you want it dark is this even a thing um I I I would be tempted to just either pull this down so that it's just there emphasizing what's going on rather than making it a main feature. Um, 
Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. New stuff. We've got more fire extinguisher stuff there, but that's done. And we've got these these elements here that come in towards the end of the heavy section. Shall we see what those are doing? We should. Thank you. That's what I'm here for. All right, well, I missed some, didn't I? Um, we've got Sha, uh, Shing, Ting, Sha. <laughs> I'm just going to... I'm just going to assume that means something. Well, I guess they're onomatopoeias, right? Oh, yeah. Let's, I'm just going to run them. Okay. So one of them was Sha. <laughs> um, let's just see where we, these need to be within the mix, shall we? Here's a good example of something that was exported in stereo, but maybe better off being less. Yeah, but it's actually a mono source sound, but maybe better off being in stereo using the Reaper trick that I just showed you. Loud again. Sorry, AR, mate. I know. I forgive you. It's all right. Thanks. I don't know why I'm forgiving myself, but it's all right. I think these are pretty good. I, what The majority of these, once they're sort of like in place, they don't really need a lot of stuff. They're already really quite heavily processed, so it's just about some TLC. Um, so we can move on to the chorus now, really. <laughs> 